WeWork plans pre-IPO debt sale. WeWork has a plan to shore up confidence in its business before it goes public. Offer billions of dollars in debt designated, designed to fund its growth until it can turn a profit. The money losing office space manager is seeking to raise as much as $3 billion to $4 billion in the coming months through a debt facility that could grow as big as $10 billion over the next several years, people said. This debt offering would be independent of the money WeWork raises in its initial public offering and could even raise more money for the company than the IPO itself. The huge capital raise even before the IPO reflects the skepticism surrounding well-known companies like Lyft and Uber that have racked up steep losses and gone public with much fanfare but without much more trading success. Both Lyft's and Uber's stock prices are below where they went public and even further below lofty pre-IPO expectations of how high they could trade. WeWork, which lost $1.9 billion last year, has been dogged by comparisons to Uber and Lyft and haunted by a huge planned investment from SoftBank Group Incorporated that fell apart after some key investors balked at the plan. The cash from the debt facility could help shore up de demand for the IPO. People familiar with the planned deal said, in part by showing the company will be able to fund growth for years without having to turn again to equity makers, to markets, equity markets. Goldman Sachs Group and JP Morgan Chase and Co. are structuring and backing the deal, potentially along with other banks, the people said. WeWork Chief Executive Adam Newman met in recent weeks with the bank's CEO, James Diamond and David Solomon, to discuss this deal and the um, and the company's IPO. People familiar with the discussion said, WeWork's primary business is to rent long-term spaces, renovate them, and divide them, uh, and divide the offices and sublease them on a short-term basis to other firms. The company owns few properties itself. Through this debt offering, WeWork would use the cash flow it generates from individual buildings to fund the interest payments on the debt, the people said. WeWork, which has been in talks about the potential debt deal for more than a month, is looking to put the facility in place before it moves forward with its IPO later this year or early next, these people said. The transactions could be finalized in the next several weeks. Though people familiar with the deal caution that it could still fall apart or shift and take another form. Raising as much as $4 billion in the debt markets is a rarity for a company with WeWork's financial profile. People familiar with the deal said that while fast-growing companies like Uber, Spotify, Technology SA, and WeWork have tapped the debt markets in recent years, a historically unusual move for money-losing companies, raising debt at this size through cash flows is a rare if not unprecedented move. Tesla, which has yet to generate consistent profits, has used lease payments on some vehicles as collateral to sell more than $1 billion in bonds. As is generally the case with auto lease bonds, the debt was issued by a special entity aimed at protecting investors in the event of a Tesla breakup. By raising billions in new debt, WeWork would have less of a need to raise money from potential public stockholders. The IPO would still likely raise several billion dollars, these people said. Because investors in WeWork's potential new debt facility would get access to cash flow from WeWork's buildings in the US, European, and Latin American to fund debt payments, the company could raise money at a lower interest rate than it could get in the corporate bond market, where its bond trade at a high-risk premium over safe government debt. Last year, WeWork raised a significant smaller chunk of debt, $702 million, at a high interest rate of 7.9%, and the bonds were assigned ratings in the junk territory. The debt deal is designed to help now to help WeWork showcase the value of its lease and the cash flows from them, some of the people said. It is also expected to show that the profitability is something within the company's control, these people said, because many of its individual properties are profitable and much of its loss market of its loss making comes from growth efforts. WeWork has posted rapid, rapid revenue growth, but its losses have been ballooning at a similar clip. The nine-year-old New York company's $1.9 billion loss last year outstripped the $1.8 billion of revenue it generated. Its huge losses means it has a ravenous appetite for cash. 
There have been questions about whether WeWork, which rebranded itself earlier this year as the We Company, could garner a valuation anywhere near its last private round of funding. It was last valued at $47 billion when it raised capital from SoftBank earlier this year. However, at that time, SoftBank also bought shares from WeWork Company investors at a valuation of around $23 billion, giving the company a blended valuation of around $36 billion. Some investors have said it is likely to be valued lower than its $47 billion valuation in its IPO, but this debt deal could boost its public valuation. Late last year, ahead of Uber's and Lyft's offerings, WeWork has been discussing a potential deal with SoftBank that could have made an IPO unnecessary for years. SoftBank was considering investing as much as $16 billion in the real estate company, $6 billion of new money, and $10 billion to buy shares from existing investors. But the deal crumpled after some of SoftBank's investors balked over concerns including WeWork's high valuation and the firms instead invested $1 billion directly in WeWork and bought another $1 billion in existing shares. WeWork, which confidently filed for an IPO late last year, has aspirations to be more than a real estate company. Mr. Nguyen and his deputies have said investors should treat WeWork more like a tank company, pointing to its rapid growth and various services it eventually hopes to offer to cater to its tenants.